Okay, here we go. So, I got my game packaged up, and it mostly works. Uh, my laptop is, like, completely full. So, I think that's where the problem is coming in, but every once in a while, particularly if I die, it freezes. Um, that didn't happen a single time in the... Uh, the, the debugging where I was, like, playing it before. Um, but if it does happen, I'll just... Like, stop the recording, run back to that same spot, start the recording again, and then edit all of those together. Okay, so this world is a fantasy world. Um, somewhere between, like, Lord of the Rings and Steampunk. Uh, they're probably, like, a culture that's just about to go into Steampunk. So there's this real dichotomy between, like, magic and technology uh, within the world at large. So... Um, we've been looking at this, like, start menu. Um, so I would like to point out that I changed the delete save to control alt F12. Okay, um, and let's go ahead and start. I tried to put a fade in, but it didn't work. So it tells on the bottom right how many keys you need. Well, it tells how many keys that you have, and then like if you come to a corresponding door, it'll tell you how many that you need. So the point of this first area is to just kind of explain that concept and the fighting mechanism. Show that there are traps. Also, that there are checkpoints. So not every key that you find is actually found laying around like those two were. Some of them are found through opening chests. Ultimately, in the final version, I would like for this to be like an item that you'd have in your inventory that you could just apply when you need to, as opposed to one that you find laying around, like, on the ground. I forgot to show these NPCs, so... I said, go save our friend. Um, they are connected to an NPC who we'll see up there in the top. Yeah, I was thinking, seeing if you could see him from down here, but I don't think you can. But we'll, we'll see him when we go up to the top of the tunnel. Um, and he's in a little bit of trouble, and when you help him, he'll actually move and be sitting here. And then this is the final door, which again we'll see when after we're done with everything else. Good job getting that door open. So this is another NPC. Um, they are genderless, and they are a Rakshasa, which is like kind of like a, a magic werewolf, but a cat. I know they're 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 cool, um, but kind of difficult to explain. Just super. Quick. I don't have any idea what the enemies are. Um, some monster that my wife drew. I was like, I need a monster, and so she, yeah, drew the strange thing. So this is one of the, like, additional levels. Um, this, where I'm in right now, is in the persistent map. This is all level one. And then when you come through here, to vanquish that fella. This is, then, level two. <laughs> so, here's an example of, this, this chest needs two keys to open, and I have one. Go ahead and grab that, to face these two. <laughs> Okay. 
Um, I'd like to take a little ADD detour here and point out that this is like as far as you can go. So it looks like this level is huge, but it's actually really rather small and very simple. Okay, so with that key that I grabbed down at the end of the chat, or of the... And there, I'm able to now open up this chest. I still can't open that one. So I have it set so that the enemies are on a different, like, level. So that when you go in and out of here, they reset, but they don't... After you... They don't reset after the boss fight. The way that I designed this is so that as you go on, it gets a little bit more difficult and a little bit more difficult. Um, it would have to have like proper fighting mechanics, not just a hitbox that you run into and click and hope that it dies before it kills you. Because that's pretty much what it's got going right now. Um, and then ultimately the idea would be that the boss is like a uh, much more common kind of enemy that you'd find around, like a skeleton or a zombie or some such. Help me! So this is that NPC that I was talking about down below. Who's up here who needs help? Help me! See? And you push the P key to assist. And that'll be a pretty common thing in my game, helping people. Uh, and he's gone. But we'll see him again in a little bit. He's just moved down. Down to those boxes. Oh, it got me. I really like that view right there, though. That, I think that's really nice. Um, I really like it in games when you can avoid the vast majority of the fighting, and that is definitely the case in this one. Um, a lot of them you can just kind of walk past if you know where to walk. Okay, and then this is the next like additional streaming level. This would be the boss fight. I didn't put in a boss, but uh, there it is. Um, up here we have the remnants of the old dwarven mine which we were just in, so this would be like the more processing place. My favorite room because you get a view of the magic and the, the dwarven technology. Since that's going to be a big theme in this game, the uh, the competition and kind of like the merging of the two. So here's this fairy who's like a central character, um, and she's actually the... her title is the title of the game. So this is the bonus room. Um, it's set up so that you can like run around all the way through the loop and it'll reset over and over and over. <laughs> But you cannot open that big chest until you've got every chest in the level. Okay, so that thing got me, but I also got the third chest key. Um, and just opened up the end. So that's the end of the level. Here is I am ready and waiting. That, that NPC who was up there is now down here, and you can talk I to him. I am ready and waiting. That's one of the three key chests. Uh, you can you can jump up on these rocks, but you can't actually like 
go over them. You have to go through the water. That was one of the last things that I actually put in because I didn't want to like have to deal with it uh, when I was like testing and everything. But I intend to make the player have to deal with it every time, of course. Okay, and I believe the last chest is in here. Yes, it's this one. So we have now opened all chi all six chests. So come back over to the bonus room. Here we are again. I got the completionist coin. I opened up every chest. Hello. And we found that guy. So let's go to the final area now. We come here to this ladder and jump up. And then we hit E to open up this door and it should take us yeah, to the final level. So this would actually, I mean, it's not the final level, this is actually probably like the first level, the starting area of the entire game. Um, each of these doors would be kind of like Nintendo 64 style, lead you to a different little mini map or pocket area or something. Um, and as you learn of them or do favors or purchase them or what have you, more of these doors will open. You see it has the video on the door showing what world it is, so that way you can differentiate between all of the very samey doors. And I always kind of hate it in games when you go through the tutorial and your inventory is completely full and you just want to sell your stuff and like launch into the game, but there's not a store for a long time. Um, so in this game, you come out of the tutorial in the store. I am his mana, my friend. You can purchase, or will be able to purchase from this guy, and then go out, you know, into the world at large. Um, again, the magic and the technology coming together, things are changing in this world pretty drastically right now. Uh, the way that I envisioned this is like a wild western town around a castle. I guess that's kind of what I have. And then one final thing, my little easter egg secret. If you crouch, you can go right through the fire.